Hi guys, back once again, and this time uh, I thought I'd make this video because whilst I was perusing around on Netflix, I thought, you know what, I'm going to chuck on an episode of Doctor Who. And uh, whilst I was watching uh, Doctor Who, I suddenly realised that Doctor Who does a reasonable to fair explanation as to how time travel works, but it's really nebulous. And so I thought I'd make this video to try to sort of clear up how time travel inside Doctor Who works. At least to put it into terms that makes it easier to understand. Um, now obviously Doctor Who breaks several laws of physics and usually time travel in Doctor Who works depending on how the scriptwriter wants the story to go. But, uh, and in particular, the episode I was watching was Father's Day and uh, that's what led me to doing, to doing this. Um, so where to begin? I think the easiest thing to start off with is to let's abandon the laws of physics for a second. Because uh, inside the laws of physics you've got things like the, um, the second law of thermodynamics and the arrow of time which travels from the past into the future and you can only move from that way to that way you can't go back you can only you can accelerate but you can't reverse uh, you can only travel along the arrow of time now obviously in Doctor Who he's able to travel into the past using the TARDIS um, and how is this possible then? so I want you to reject this sort of arrow of time idea for now and actually look at it from a different way. And the way I'm going to ask you to look at it from is a river. Not, not, not that river. A river. There we go. So, the river is upstream to downstream. And upstream is the past and downstream is the future. And now we're going to put boats on the river. And these boats are going to be considering themselves to be the present. Now the doctor in the TARDIS can join them in the river. You can just get in the river and there you go. Now he's travelling downstream from the, using the current of the river to travel from upstream in the past to downstream in the future. So once he's travelling with these people in these boats, he decides to travel to either the past or the future. We're going to pick the past. So what he does is actually the, the river being the universe, he decides to exit the river and get out onto the banking, which is the time corridor. Once being on the banking, he can now either travel to the past or the future. He can now run up and down the banking in either direction. But here's the thing, when he, he, he runs to the past and jumps back into the river, he is now travelling in tandem with the people in the present, which is why when the Doctor comes back to the present he is not coming back to where he left but he's coming back to where the people are now because he has entered their universal time stream. I hope you're keeping up, this should be fairly self-explanatory. So here's the thing. You've also got fixed points in time. So as you're travelling down the river, we can illustrate fixed points in time by putting rocks in the river. Now these rocks, these fixed points, change the flow of time. They change the flow and the direction of the river. The, the, the river is running past them, it can swim. You cannot move these fixed points in time because if you do, you change the flow of the river. This is, is a big drastic change and could lead to catastrophe. You could end up causing a flood or, you know, that this analogy kind of works, I think, so far. So, that's why you can't really change fixed points, is that because doing so would alter a, a, the current of the river, it would alter the flow, it would alter the direction, it could cause a lot of problems. Now, this is also why when the Doctor travels in time, that it, like, for example, in the episode Bad Wolf, when he travels into the future and he sends Rose back into the past and she's sitting there eating her chips and she says, no, no, it's happening now. It's because these two time events are actually in parallel with each other. Time is always moving forward. Regardless of whether you travel to the past or the future, it is always moving that way. Once you enter back into the stream, you are still moving in that direction. 
and you can only move in that direction. Now, obviously there are instances whereby the Doctor can meet himself and whatnot. These are anomalies. These are things that really shouldn't happen. And the reason why it shouldn't happen is that if you travel back to the present, now we've already established that the, t the past, present and future are all moving forward downstream. If you were to go to the present where you originally arrived, the people in that time stream are no longer there. They are actually moved into the future. So it does get a little complicated, but that's pretty much how I would explain time travel inside Doctor Who. And that is that the universe exists in this river, and the reason why the Doctor can travel back in time is because he has to exit the universe. He can't travel back in time inside the universe, that would break the laws of physics. So he exits the universe into the time corridor, and then can travel up and down the bank in any direction that he likes. Now the, the other thing here is that this analogy kind of does fall apart a little bit when dealing with having to travel and meet your own self and, and things like that. Yes, there are problems with that. The other way to look at it is like frames of a film. And this is my preferred way of looking at how Doctor Who time travels. So a, a movie is made up of, you know, most movies made up of 25 frames a second and each frame is a frame of time. It's a frame one in front of the other that uh, gets repeated in a sequence and moves from one direction to another and therefore you end up with a moving picture of film. Now what the Doctor is able to do then, using this as an analogy, is exit the film, rewind it or fast forward it, and then re-enter the film. Now what would be a fixed point in time using this as an analogy? Well, let's assume that uh, you're watching the movie and I'm going to choose Independence Day, right? So let's assume that you're watching Independence Day. You could end the Doctor could enter the film, be a part of Independence Day, could save certain people's lives or whatever. That's kind of um, in flux. But the fixed point in the film is going to be the alien invasion. The destruction of the Empire State Building, the destruction of the White House, all, all that sort of stuff. The reason why that becomes the, the fixed point is that if you don't let that happen, you no longer have Independence Day. What you've got is a film um, about a load of people going about their daily lives and a president who's failing in the polls. And it might be a somewhat interesting film, but it's no longer Independence Day now, is it? If you went to the movie store and picked up a DVD or Blu-ray of Independence Day and you picked that up and it was there was no alien invasion. It's vastly different. Um, that would even cause consequences both back and forth because, you know, backwards, the film, that script would never have gotten greenlit and therefore it would have never have gotten made and therefore that film no longer exists. So that's really the best way, I think, of looking at time travel inside Doctor Who is that you could leave the film and enter the grand temporal theatre that is the TARDIS and then rewind the film to a point and then insert themselves back in to the film. And that's also how he would be able to interact with himself in other parts. Um, but really, again, the, t the time travel inside Doctor Who is vastly left up to whoever's writing the script. Um, this is really sort of the, like, the best way I can explain how time travel inside Doctor Who works. And if you're still confused, um, I don't blame you. There's, there's quite a lot to sort of dig through when you've got the TARDIS slipping time tracks and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, but I hope, you know, if you're confused at all about how time travel inside Doctor Who works, I just hope this helps. Anyway, let me know what you think of what I just said about time travel inside Doctor Who. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you've enjoyed this video as well, give me the thumbs up. Uh, but until next time, I'll see you later, guys. You no longer have an Independence Day. Bloody ice cream van.
Shut up! Thank you. <laughs> oh, God.